Hi, this is guidance for strand two of the DTIA. And in this strand, you are going to be using concept modeling and analyzing the outcomes to help guide your design development. The first thing to note is that the concept modeling in strand two should be concurrent with the development of ideas that you did in strand one. And the evidence of both are going to be integrated. As I mentioned before, you're going to be using concept modeling and analyzing that to help guide your design development. And you're expected to use an iterative design methodology to develop and refine ideas based on the development and testing of the concept models. This is an example of an iterative model. And you can see in it that you actually start with an original design. You're going to model it in several ways. You're going to test it, evaluate it, refine it and then go back through the cycle again, where you design, model, test, evaluate, refine, and then back again. And again, I'm gonna mention this 100 times in Criterion B, but it is so important that you include your users in this process. Their feedback is vital in the evaluation and refining part of this process. You can see from the guidance in the IA, from the IB, it says as part of the iterative process, students must follow a design model test evaluate refine cycle. The type of model needs to be considered appropriate for the purpose of that model. That is, which aspects of the specifications the model is being tested against. Models can be shared and used by clients, target users, and experts to gather both qualitative and quantitative feedback, which then needs to be analyzed to drive forward design development. You can consider using the following models, but you're not limited to these. Definitely graphical models need to be used to communicate design ideas. You know, napkin sketches are a great way to start off your design ideas. Formal drawing techniques should be used, perspective drawings, isometric projections orthographic drawings, scale drawings, and any part or assembly drawings. It is vital that you use physical modeling because this allows you to interact with your designs. You can create scale models, aesthetic models, mock-ups, prototypes, or instrumented models. And these allow you to do experiments on your actual designs. It also gives your target users an actual physical thing that they can manipulate, and that is absolutely vital in this process. Another really great way to model is using CAD. And this allows you to do things like have virtual models and calculations. You can do surface modeling, solid modeling, virtual prototyping, including simulations of electronics, structures, mechanisms, mathematical modeling, or finite element analysis. Depending on the manufacturing capabilities at your school, you can use rapid prototyping to really quickly and accurately create physical models. You can use stereolithography if you have it, laminated object manufacturing if you have it, fused deposition modeling, which is 3D printing, and selective laser sintering. As part of the iterative process, you're gonna create models at different levels of fidelity. And you're gonna start with the low fidelity conceptual representations that are analogous to an idea. These are your napkin sketches that show your divergent thinking. They will be annotated, they will have user feedback, all that great stuff. And that's gonna be used to help you iterate further. At the medium fidelity stage, I would expect to see things like CAD models, 3D drawings, I would expect to see physical models, and I would also expect to see some of the experimentation that goes on with these models, as well as user feedback. At the high fidelity stage, I would expect to see mainly CAD drawings, maybe assemblies in, the, in CAD. I would also expect to see lots of physical modeling, and this physical modeling should be really high fidelity so it should look very much like the actual product will end up looking like you may also create models of parts of your design or the whole design as you develop different aspects of your solution and you're going to create models and use them in different contexts 
So for instance, in your low fidelity napkin type sketches, you're probably going to have this in a restricted context in a controlled environment. This may be running these ideas past the design students that are in the class, getting user feedback. When you have another iteration, you might look at a more general context. So this could be any user in any environment. You might have a more partial context as you have a further iteration. This is the final user or the environment. And then the total context, which is the final user in the final environment. This chart shows this process. You can see on the Y axis, we've got the fidelity from low to high. And we've got the context on the X axis from restricted all the way to total context. So you need to show evidence of model based development. You should present evidence of using modeling to refine ideas before selecting your idea to develop further. The evidence of modeling can be presented as annotated photographs or annotated CAD images. Annotations should identify what has been learned through the modeling and testing of the design. Further design development should incorporate the findings from the modeling and the connection between the modeling and the changes made to the design should be explicit through the annotation. You are discouraged in this strand from having any extended writing. You should also not be producing models that are just no more than physical representations of a drawing and do not aid in the development process. Narrating or explaining the model making process, don't do that please. Explaining why each type of model was selected, there's no need to explain why that model was selected or to the type of model was selected. Showing multiple views of a CAD drawing that doesn't help guide the development process. Including feedback rather than key findings used to identify strengths and weaknesses of the design. Make sure your annotations are a summary of what you found, not just the feedback itself in the raw form. Using generic annotations should be avoided and any sort of pixelated or low quality images need to be avoided. Like strand one, this strand should only include annotations of 10 words or fewer. Extended writing to explain how models were created or narratives about how they were utilized must not be used. If annotations are more than 10 words or extended text are used, these will contribute to your overall word count. This is a high performing example of strand two. The student demonstrates excellent use of conceptual modeling and evidence from it to support the iterative design approach. Both physical models and CAD models are used. Personal and user client staff testing provides useful feedback to aid further development of the five ideas. Initial low fidelity modeling using cardboard and styrofoam is well executed, allowing users to provide quick feedback and drive the further development of ideas. Evaluation is thorough and illustrates a good understanding of user needs. The student clearly uses the feedback from users to improve the design. The practical investigations of the modeled ideas with both children and adults facilitates the student's insight into understanding how users will potentially interact with the proposed designs. Further development of the chosen design is logical and concise. The development is based on excellent use of ongoing testing and feedback to design a successful outcome that addresses the problem's needs. Use of modeling strategies, including CAD and 3D printing for components, indicates attention to safety and originality. Work is clearly documented, illustrating an iterative journey through the development of a prototype. Complexities involving moving parts and assembly of components are resolved through further design, modeling, and testing. The design thinking behind decisions indicates the student is proficient at solving problems. There is a thorough understanding of design concepts and principles. This is an example of a medium performance in strand two. A range of modeling strategies are used to test ideas, including physical and computer-aided design modeling. However, testing of the models is somewhat superficial as items to be stored are not those tested throughout the development. Testing is mostly focused on aesthetics and potential placement of the design. Physical testing of the desk supports would have been useful to identify any weaknesses 
with a major aspect of this design proposal. Testing with the items to be stored and consideration of how items can be better organized would aid the refinement of the outcome that addresses the need of the problem. The final design development is not fully tested and a current solution will have significant flaws when storing items and when moving between wall and desk positions. Evidence of user testing with physical models and analysis of feedback would assist in identifying strengths and weaknesses of the design and justifying decisions for further development.